Hello everyone. I hope you all are safe, staying home, watching the videos and having fun with science. I know you all are enjoying the activities and I am receiving feedbacks too about that and we will be doing more activities in this video too. So this is our uh, ninth uh, video from the series of um, scientific uh, measuring instruments and so in today's episode uh, I've come up with angle measuring instruments for you. So when we say angle measuring instruments, the most basic instrument that comes to our mind is the protractor. Yes, the D-shaped thing in our geometry box. Many of you must have used this in your class too. So as you can see in the protractor, it is a very basic instrument. Uh, it is a half circle. And as you can see, it has a line at the bottom. One side it is marked 0 degrees and on the other side 180 degrees. So this protractor can measure up to 180 degrees starting from 0. And the lines of all the degrees as is marked on that protractor. Correct? So when you keep this protractor on any angle, like keep 0 uh, coinciding with one side of your angle and then you go and measure the line which is coinciding on the angle that you are measuring. So you also get this whole circle that is 360 degree circle and you can measure all the angles from 0 to 360 in this uh, full protractor, a circle, circular protractor. So basically, this is the most uh, simple measuring instrument. So in angle measuring instruments, uh, you either measure any angle that is already existing or you reproduce it. That is, if some angle is existing, you make another same angle like before. So I will be telling you more instruments that do this also. So then this uh, instrument is also very similar to the protractor. There are a little bit of uh, more additions to this to the protractor. As you can see, there is a thread, uh, there is a nut and there is a straw. Isn't it very easy to make at home? Just take a protractor and this is the activity of today's episode. Just take a protractor, a straw uh, because we need to see uh, through it or need to focus our sight uh, with that straw, we need a thread and a nut to keep it handy. So this is nothing but a collimator. So the actual collimator which you get in the market looks something like this. But we can make it at home also. And what is it actually used for? It is used to measure elevated angles. So, if you are standing at one point and you want to measure the height of a very tall wall or a building, what you can do is you can go and make your line of the protractor parallel to the ground and then measure the angle of the top of the building. Then with the Pythagoras theorem, you can find the height of the building. That is also very easy to do. So as I told you, you can make this at home very easily. And now, this man is doing the same thing with the same instrument, but it looks a little different, right? Yes, because it is a very ancient instrument. It is also called as a astrolabe because it is used mostly in astronomy to measure different angles. So now I'm going to tell you about some more advanced protractors. Uh, you may not have seen these instruments, uh, but as we are uh, getting to know all the instruments, I have included them also. And it's fun, right, to know different instruments uh, which we have not seen, but uh, to know how they are used and where they are used. So, one of them is this uh, baby protractor. So, it has an arm uh, which measures the angle and it has a protractor as the uh, pro uh, protractor that we have seen before. As you can see it has a disc like protractor also. 
So sometimes this bevel protractor has a vernier scale attached to it. So what does a vernier scale do? It gives very precise readings. So if you are not aware of what a vernier scale is, you can go back and watch the a length measuring instrument video in which we have seen a vernier caliper with a vernier scale. So the same vernier scale is attached to this bevel protractor to give you more precise readings. This bevel protractor is mostly used in architectural uh, and uh, mechanical um, industries where you actually have to duplicate some existing angles. Like if there is a job and you have to duplicate the angle which is already existing in the first model. So when you do this, you, uh, the angle is actually measured with a mechanical contact. So this protractor is also called the mechanical protractor. And this is a very uh, precise instrument than the first pro protractor that we saw. So if it is a bit uh, difficult to imagine how actually the angle is measured, we are going to see a video and then it will be clear. Along with that one, we should go for owing in such a manner that in such a manner that our stock should exactly touch the bottom reference plate. Right? So I am going to lock it and I am going to take the reading now. Right? So which is showing exactly which is showing exactly 4 minute and next one 4 minute is the in scale reading and vernier scale reading uh, that is 15. So uh, then there is uh, one attachment uh, to this um, bevel protractor. Uh, there is one more instrument I would say but it is not actually, it does not actually measure angles on its own. It needs a bevel protractor with it. Uh, then there is one more instrument called the dial gauze uh, which actually measures the angle but it is a setup. It is called a sign bar. So this sign bar has uh, some cylinders as you can see and it has an angle to it which can be adjusted. Uh, there is one more uh, adjustment to the sign bar which is called a sign center. So as you can see in the two uh, adjustments you can see here, uh, it is basically a sign center. Uh, it has very narrow applications but it is very very precise and very useful to duplicate the existing angles. Uh, so it it is very narrow, why did I say it is very narrow applications because it can just measure conical instruments and that too only till 60 degrees. So I, uh, we can say this is a drawback of this instrument that it can measure only uh, to 60 degrees but it is very very precise. And now let's see how it actually measures the angle through this video. I'll place the component. This is a rest plate. Even you can see, this is a rest plate. So that the component will not fall down or it will not slip. That's why this rest plate is required. Now, I will take a dial gauge. Now, see what I will do. I will set it. So, first of all, you try to adjust it to the zero because you can rotate this bezel. This, you know that this is a bezel. Now, Slowly move from one end to an other end. Move from first position to the second position. Slowly you can move. Slowly. Right? Again, move on both the direction. Then there is one more instrument called the spirit level. So you all must have seen this instrument. Uh, if you have not, you can also download it. It, uh, it is a, a basic app on smartphones. And this instrument is basically used to see if the surfaces are 
play. For example, if this is the level, uh, sorry, spirit level, you just keep it on the table and see if the bubble, adjust the bubble. And if the bubble is exactly at the center, you definitely know that this table is exactly parallel to the ground. But now, interesting fact is, this instrument can be also used to measure or to draw different angles. And this is how it is used. And when pressed longer, switches from absolute to incremental measurement. This function enables measurements from an arbitrary reference level. The mode button allows adjustment of the measuring settings. Wasn't well, this interesting? This video was very, very fascinating. How he actually drew the angle and could get exact, precise value digitally. And then he drew the angle on the wall. I love this video a lot. So then we are at the end of the video and just one instrument is left. It is called the auto collimator. It looks something like this. And the fascinating thing about this instrument is that it measures angles with no contact. Yes, it measures angles with lasers without any contact. And this is how it is done. Working of auto collimator. The light rays from the light source passes through the filter. This filter selectively transmit light in a particular range of wavelength. That means, only particular colors, with a particular range, will be allowed to pass through the filter, while it absorbs the remaining colors. After passing through the filter, the light beam passes through the condenser lens. Condenser lens helps in rendering a divergent beam from a point source into a parallel beam. This helps in rendering a sharper image. Then the light beam passes from diffuser, which will scatter light in some manner to transmit soft light. After passing through the diffuser, the beam of light will pass through objective radical. Then it falls onto the beam splitter. Here, the beam of light splits into two, and it gets projected on both the sides. The beam of light traveling on the left-hand side will pass through the eyepiece radical and eyepiece lens. On the other hand, the beam of light traveling in the right side will pass through the objective lens and falls on the plane reflector. If the plane reflector, which is workpiece surface, if it is perpendicular to the beam of light, it will reflect the beam of light in the same path. Hence, both the beams will fall at the same point. Let us consider this point B, O. Suppose, if the workpiece surface is at angle theta, then the beam of light will be reflected back at an angle, 2 theta. Therefore, the reflected beam of light will fall at a different point. Let us consider this point to be O dash. By knowing the distance between O and O dash, which we have denoted by X, and by knowing the focal length of the lens, we can use this relationship to find out the angle theta. This is the working of autocollimator. <coughs> and it, it measures angles as we saw. So I hope you all have loved the video and you all have enjoyed uh, the journey of this angle measuring instrument and this different uh, attachments that it has. And when I uh, did this research or when I read about this, I was really fascinated to know how industries, how big industries, how big workshops work and they have so many different measuring instruments. So we are going to come up with such instruments in the next video also, which was which will be our last video in this series. And I hope you all are going to make this astrolabe at home and measure different angles using the astrolabe. Let me know if you love this video in the comments below and let's meet up in the next video. Bye.